being relevant, this means that we've got to be attractive to people. We've got to keep moving with the times. That doesn't mean we change theology. It doesn't mean we change the message of the gospel or anything like that. But we have to adapt to be relevant. Can anybody agree to that? Y'all agree to that? Amen. So another way to do this, uh, another way to be relevant is, is to do what I just said, but also is to keep children and youth as a priority. Uh, you heard in the testimonies today that a lot of these people came because of the youth program. You look at dying churches, they don't make children a priority. I heard someone talking uh, a couple weeks ago, and, and they were saying, talking to an elderly person and said, well, we're thinking about coming to your church. And they asked them if they had kids, and they said, yeah, we've got kids. And, and they said, well, we don't really have kids, and I don't know. They may be a distraction to the, to the pastor. So I don't know if it would be a good idea if you bring them. That's a dying church. That's a dying church. Uh, it's so much more than that, but I'll just stop there. We, we need to have these things in mind if we're going to be relevant. And so what I'm getting ready to share with you is a way that our church can be relevant to our community. And this idea that we're getting ready to launch is community-focused. It's family-focused. It's youth-focused. But the word I want to get in your mind, it, it is absolutely community-focused. It is community-first. And that's what I want to teach us to be about, the community, our culture, outside of these walls. If you hear nothing else from me, if you get nothing else from me today, get that. Um, so, forward by faith is a phrase that we've been using around this church for years. Here's our new forward by faith logo. Um, this is uh, something that we have been doing in this church, like I said, for years, over 20 years. Uh, but I want to share with you my vision. Now that I've given you the vision for this year, I want to share with you my vision for church not just this year but going forward um, some of you have not been with us long uh, you don't know the history behind our church but I want to I want to kind of bring you up to speed really quickly I know what time it is I'm trying to hurry but I need you guys to hear this can y'all just bear with me um, and so um, it, yeah yeah so for those of you who don't know, we have 29.34 acres behind Food Line. It's undeveloped. It's the only undeveloped commercial property in Buena Vista. And um, many years ago, the church decided to buy this land. God worked in mysterious ways. Uh, one of the ways that he worked mysteriously is there was a note that was due, I believe, in 2009 uh, of about 19 thousand dollars and some change and the note was coming due uh, the church had been paying on it but the note was coming due and um, Charlie Manuel who's a Philadelphia Phillies former manager he's also his dad pastored this church uh, in the 70s his mother passed away and when she passed away he took up an offering amongst the Philadelphia Phillies uh, and they gave that offering to the church and it was twenty thousand dollars uh, that paid off the land in 2009. I believe that's right. If, if those of you who have been here, please forgive me if these dates are wrong. So our land behind Food Line is, is paid off. And um, so we've had that land, sir, and tax-free. Yes, sir, tax-free, coming from one of our city council members. Amen. Um, <laughs> amen. Amen. So, so, um, we have, this, we have this land. Now, let me tell you about my journey and where my journey meets, meets this. And, and I'm going to try to do this without crying, but I don't know if I can. In 2011, Lacey and I came to Buena Vista, Virginia, following God. We, we knew it was God. And um, we were the youth pastors here, children's pastors. And um, uh, we had been here for a little bit, and I was riding with Pastor Mills and Pastor Tim Morrison. Do you all remember? you all remember Pastor Tim? We were riding in Tim's... Tim's old blue Mercury. That thing was like a boat. You just floated in that thing. And um, we were coming by the land, and Pastor Mills said this, and I'll never forget it. He said, I feel like I'm Moses, and I can't get the people to the promised land. And right there in that moment, the Holy Spirit hit me, and he said, you're the Joshua to take the people to the promised land. And it threw me back. Because that's a big calling and that's a big ask. 
But ever since then, I've accepted that calling. And I've pondered it in my heart, just like Mary pondered it in her heart. When the angel came and told her that she would be with child and be the Messiah, she didn't go out saying, hey, I'm having a baby, it's Jesus, the Messiah. She pondered it in her heart because that was crazy. So I've been pondering this in my heart. And then 2018, I became the pastor of this church. Um, and thank God for that. And that was on my mind. It's been on my mind the whole life. I mean, there's been opportunities to go other places, but that land and relocating on that land has been in my mind. And I felt like it was the, the call of God to see us get there, that I was the Joshua, the Moses that would, would get us there. And so... Um, 2018 hit and, and we became the pastors here. I just felt like that was God putting us into place to fulfill the plan and the call that he had on my life. Um, and so 2018, can you throw up that next slide? 2018, go to the next one. In 2018, we finished the master plan um, for the church. This is a, a, a three, at least three phase master plan. Uh, of a new church property. Uh, this includes ball fields. It includes a walking track. And I'm going to go into this in just a moment. Um, but as I became the pastor, I was gung-ho about seeing this through. I knew that God had called me, but I got the timing wrong. I was wrong. And, and we started out on a two-year fundraising campaign in 2019. And, and it, it, was, it, was, it was okay, but it wasn't great. Uh, we raised $108,000 in pledges. Uh, we saved one hundred sixteen thousand dollars. So we all together we saved two hundred twenty four thousand, but we were trying to raise three hundred thousand. So it was a, what I call a graceful flop, and that's I guess that's just me being positive. I don't know. Um, but we finished our master plan. Let me tell you a little bit about our master plan. Phase one is. Uh, it's hard to see that, but phase one is all the grading, the sewer, the electricity, everything needed to put a building on that land. It is also a pavilion, similar to the one we have over there, but it's bigger. It seats 200 people. It's got a nice double fireplace, and it looks out over the mountain. It is also a softball field, regulation size, 300-foot fence, and a regulation size soccer slash football field with a walking course around the whole property. Go back to that. Can you go back to that one picture? One right before this. There you go. You can see softball field. And the whole idea of putting those fields in is we have to move a lot of dirt. It's a great location. It's a beautiful view, but the land itself is not the best to build on. So we have to move a lot of dirt. And since we're moving dirt, we thought, well, let's make some fields with that dirt. And... The real reason behind that is because we want to be community-driven. We want to be relevant to the community. So phase two would not be a sanctuary. Phase two would be a family life center with a full-size gymnasium that has, just go back, stay there. That's the pavilion, but go back to that. Phase two is a full-size gymnasium with a, a, with a children's wing and a lobby. You can see the brown or the tan there, the light tan. The lobby is the curved area. It will look out over the mountains. It will be solid glass, and you'll be able to see the mountains. It's absolutely beautiful. So phase two, we will operate in phase two as a worship center as well, but it will be a multi-purpose building. And then phase three would be the sanctuary. Pastor Adam, why? Because it is not about us, number one. It's about them. Who's them? The lost. The community. Also, because once we finish phase two, we can sell this current property and the youth center, and we can totally move up to the land. Y'all with me so far? Amen? So that's why we chose to do it in this way. All right. So, back to 2019. We started this venture, then COVID hit, and we as a church were just not ready. Um, so I want to bring you back to, to just recent, recent last year. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys exactly what happened, um, because, it, and I want to be transparent, because in just a moment I'm going to ask you to get on board with this. So I want to be as transparent as possible. Back in October... Um, you know, the land has always been on my mind, like I said. 
But back in October, I was running with Greg, as we normally do, but this day was different. We was about at the end of our run, and Greg starts to ask me all these stupid questions. Like, where are we at with the land? Are we going to relocate? What if we, or, or, or could we sell the land and, and refurbish our current location? Uh, is this your vision or is this Pastor Mills' vision? Uh, all these questions, and to the point where I was ready for the run to be done. And Greg, you can you can tell them the truth. And it was awkward at the end. You know, you ever been in a conversation with somebody and you had to go and it was just awkward and you knew it was awkward and they knew it was awkward? So much to the point where he texted me earlier that day, checking on me, he's like, dude, are we all right? You okay? <laughs> and and I was like, yeah. So the next day I'm, we're running and I'm still ticked. I mean, I'm mad, I'll be honest. I'm frustrated. I'm like, so we're running, I'm like, he brings it up. I'm like, thank you for bringing it up. I'm mad at you. What, is, what, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm frustrated, man. Where is this coming from? I thought you was my friend. I mean, that's exactly what I told him. And uh, he's like, well, he's like, me and Jessica, we're thinking about joining the church. And he said, if I'm going to join the church, I want to be all in. I want to be 100% behind you, and I want to support your vision. So I want to know what your vision is. I said, that's fair. I said, that's fair. So I began praying fervently. I began praying fervently. God, lead me in this. I mean, it's pressure, guys. I mean, I don't know if y'all can just imagine the pressure. It's on a pastor walking into that. But anyway, it's pressure. And I don't mean for you to feel sorry for me. I'm just telling you. Um, and so uh, I began praying about it. I began praying about it. And on October the 16th, on October the 16th, I was in my quiet time in the morning, about 6 o'clock in the morning. If you get if you get a random text from me at 6 o'clock in the morning, it's because I'm having my quiet time, okay? Just hit your snooze and, and look at it when you wake up, all right? But I'm in my quiet time, and I'm like, Lord, Lord, tell me about the land. What, are we, what am I supposed to do, God? I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. God, I'll sell the land. You want me to sell the land? I'll, I'll sell the land. We'll refurbish it. What do you, if you, or God, do you want us to move forward and relocate? And I'll never forget this. He said, I will supply your every need. And I said, God, okay. Okay, God, are you telling us that we need to relocate? And he said again, I will supply your every need. I said, okay, God, I'll roll on that. I will roll on that. That's all I needed to hear. So I didn't tell nobody that night I went to bed. And I had a dream, and I don't dream. If I do, I don't remember. When my head hits the pillow, I'm done until my alarm goes off, all right? But that night I dreamed, and I had a dream, and I was sitting down at a table, and Pastor Tim Stoneacre came up to me. Now, pastor Tim Stoneacre, for those of you who don't know, he's the pastor of our daughter church, the Freedom Center in Lexington. He was the former youth pastor uh, and treasurer here. He was Pastor Mills' right-hand man, and when we were trying to go forward with the land, he was there. I hadn't seen Tim Stoneacre in at least six months. I don't talk to him. I hadn't. Since then, I've re I rekindled our relationship. But in this dream, I was sitting down at a table, and Tim walked up to me, and he said, Now is the time to go. It's time to move. And I started weeping in my dream, and I gave him a hug. I was sitting down, and I gave him a hug. And when he hugged me, he embraced me, and it was like he was saying, you're the man for the job. Move forward. Now's the time. And I woke up out of that dream. That night, that was a Tuesday, had a board meeting that night. You can't make this stuff up. I'm telling you. I went and I told the board exactly what had happened to me the last two days. And every one of them was like, it's now time to go. Let's do it. And we've been praying on it ever since. And we've got, we've got confirmation after confirmation. Uh, on, on November the 2nd, we met with Hughes and Associates who'd done our master plan. Ron Cash and I, Ron Cash knows the land uh, as good or better than anybody. Probably but way better than anybody. Uh, with Pastor Tristan and I, we met. And Hughes was going to provide us with a proposal for the site plan. We've got the master plan, but now you've got to have a site plan to get all the details and the sewer and whatever and everything. And so I'm, 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 I'm praying through that and, and, and just sifting through that. 
uh, on, number, on November the 4th, some of you guys are going to laugh at this, but I, I believe God speaks to us in different ways. On November 4th, I was hunting, um, and um, <laughs> uh, I, I was <laughs> I was sick, I was coughing, some of you guys remember that, and I was eating about a little pack of Hall's um, cough drops about a day, because I was just trying not to cough and scare the deer away, but anyway, so I'm sitting there hunting, and uh, all this has happened, and I open up one of these wrappers, and for those of you who don't know, Halls has a message on every one of the wrappers. But I had never paid, I had never looked at one single one before I looked at this one. I didn't even know they had a message on there until I was like, what's this? And I looked at it. Can you throw up that, that slide? And if you see the middle, it just it says march forward, march forward. You know, it's a stupid rapper, but when I read that, the Holy Spirit just, I mean, I felt that. I didn't, it, it, you know, God speaks to us in different ways. Um, now, November the 10th, I received the site plan. I'm like, it's going to be, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Maybe 20 they come back $97,000 for the site plan. <laughs> and immediately I was gripped with fear and discouraged. I said, God, I take one step forward and two steps back. What's, it, what's up with this? It's like we can't get going on the land. And I remember it, I remember it so vividly. It was, it, was November, it was November the 19th. I was here in the morning, every mor every Sunday morning, I come and pray at 7 o'clock. I was here in the morning, and I was pleading, pleading to God, I'm like, God, what am I going to do? Every time we go forward with this, we get knocked back. And he said to me, do you not think when I told you that I would supply your every need that I knew about this bill? i never forget it. I said, all right, God, I'll roll again. And ever since then, I've been rolling. I've been rolling. November the 29th, your administrative council voted to move forward with the site plan. We're going to pay cash for it out of our checking and savings. And January the 4th, Pastor Tristan and I met with Tom Roberts, Alan McMahon, McMahon and Corey Henson of BV. You can show that picture there. Uh, we met with them, and we are on our way to breaking ground this year. Amen. The final site plan is almost finished. Um, after that happens, we're going to start pulling permits, paying permits. We'll start talking with excavators, getting estimates. And our plan is to break ground in spring of 2024, phase one. Amen. You can be seated for just a second. Amen. I need to look into that. Amen. Um, um, so, phase one, breaking ground with phase one. Um, this is getting the land prepared to build on. This is ball fields. This is a pavilion. Um so what's that going to cost? It's going to cost like one to one point five million dollars. Okay, that's a lot of money. Um, yeah, amen. So we've got. So what we've got to do is we've got to secure a loan between now and then. Um, we've got to have a bank to work with us in order to loan us loan us that money. Um, so that's how you can begin. To help us, um, so I have a ask. I have a ask again. I want to mention that this phase one is is a part of our community-driven focus. It's not for us; it's for them. We want the community 
to filter through BVPHC, not us filter through the community. Does that make sense? Um, so what's the ask? I got, I got three Ps for you, all right? Turn your neighbor and say, uh-huh. Yeah, this is, the, this is the part that I've been sweating for the, like, the last, you know, 10 years. All right, so the first part is for you to pick, pick for yourself. Pick, it's the first P. Decide, are we going to do this? You've been hearing about this for years, but now is the time for you to get on board. We, listen to me, we can do it together. We can, it, I can do it, you can do it, but we can do it together with God's help. He has spoken and he has said he will supply our every need. He's spoken. And to be honest, I, I'm scared to death, but I know what God said and I can't go back from that. I can't go back. I can't sit still because I would be operating in disobedience. I'm not going to do that. I can't pretend that God didn't say that to me. I can't do that. So you can pick for yourself, decide for yourself. The second thing is pray. Pray that a bank will work with us and we'll get alone. That's the first prayer we need to pray. Pray that the bank would work with us and that we would get alone. And then the third thing is the big ask, is I would like for you to partner with us financially. The first thing that I want to tell you as your pastor, if you're not tithing, you need to begin tithing. Let me say it again. If you're not tithing, then you need to begin tithing. That's the first thing that we need to do. What is a tithe? A tithe is a 10% of your income. Here's how I look at it. You may not agree with me, and that's fine, but I'll, I'll back, I can show you scripture to back this up. 10% is God's no matter what. 10% is God's. Anything that you give over that is an offering, and it is your choice. 10% is not a choice. Anything over that is your choice to give an offering. That's how I look at it for my own life. And so this partnership is definitely a choice. But in order for this to work, in order for us to truly do this, we need your tithe. We need every person tithing uh, so that we can make the payment. And then in, in just a second, I'm going to share, share my plan. Then in two years, we can dump what, I'm getting ready to sh what we're getting ready to raise on top of that and cut, and cut down the years on the loan. Amen? Y'all see that? So here's what we need. Can you throw up that, that next slide, brother? Here's what we need. We need 75 people giving $100 a month for 24 months. This is what we need as a church. We need us in here, 75 of us. Or uh, we need to raise $7,500 a month for 24 months to meet our goal. Okay, we want to raise three hundred and thirty thousand dollars in the next two years. So this is this is the some of the other things that we need. We need large gifts of twenty five thousand, fifteen, ten, seventy five, five, and we need ten people to give a thousand dollars, a thousand dollar one time donation. You want to hear some great news? Two people has already donated ten thousand dollars each towards this venture. So we only need one more $10,000 donation for this to work. I know this is big, but God's bigger. And I'm believing God to move on your heart. I'm believing God to speak to you. And I'm believing God to speak to others outside of this church, businessmen and women, people that have money in deep pockets that will give some towards this venture. Because again, it's not for us. It's for them. It's so that our kids can have a state-of-the-art softball facility. We can host tournaments. We can have kids up there on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We can have families, not just in church on Wednesday and Sunday, but we can have families on our campus Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday. So here is those gifts. So our one-time gifts would equal um, 150000 Go to that next slide. Our $150,000, our, our pledges, our partnerships between us, would be $180,000, and that equals $330,000 is what we're aiming to raise in two years. We're already at 6% as we stand here this morning. We're at 6% because we have $20,000 already towards this venture. Praise God for that. Um, so my plan is that if you'll continue to tithe, then we can make our payment 
and then we can add this $330,000 on top of that to cut down our loan or cut it in half, and that way it will we'll be that much closer to putting a building up there on the land. All right, I'm not going to give you a timeline. I, I'm not going to promise you anything because every time I promise something, hey, COVID will hit again. I don't know. Okay, I just want you to pray and think about getting on board with us. Um, and uh, so this is how you can partner with us. 75 people. And I'll tell you this. I want to tell you this. And I, I, don't, I, I debated about telling you this. But here's what me and Lacey are going to do. We're going to give $200 a month because I'm asking you to give one. Uh, we're going to give two just because I want to lead by example. It's going to be hard for our family. It's going to be stretched for our family to do this, but we're going to do it, $200 a month. And then what we're going to also do is I'm going to tithe off of my income, my income tax. So whatever tax that I get back from the government, I'm going to, I'm going to give a tithe toward four by faith from my taxes. You don't have to do that, but that's just a suggestion um, and that's just what we're, we're planning to do as a family um, because I don't want to ask you to do something if I'm not willing to do it myself. Amen? And I want to lead by example. So, today as you leave, there will be people, there will be ushers at the door, um, and if you look on the bottom of your, on your bulletin, there's a place where you can pledge. You can go ahead and fill out that pledge uh, if you want to, if you want to decide today, if you if the Lord spoke to you this morning, you want to do that. And can I just be honest? I hate doing this, and I hate talking about money. Just to be honest with you, it's not my heart. It's not my. It's not what moves me. But this is necessary. All right. But on the bottom of your bulletin, you can you can pledge whatever you and your family y'all can talk about it, and you can fill that out and place it in the in the offering bucket. Um, if you want to go ahead and give that today, you can. Just place in the offering bucket. There's offering uh, tithing envelopes in front of you in your cups. Miss Nita put those there. Also, if you're not tithing but you know you need to start tithing and God's moved on your heart to do that, um, then you can do so online. You can do so by getting uh, tithing envelopes. Um, those, there's some in front of you, but if you want some with your name on it, Nita's going to be at the Welcome Center. If you need envelopes, maybe you have been tithing, but you need new envelopes. She's going to be at the Welcome Center. If you want to start giving online and you don't know how to navigate that, Pastor Tristan's going to be in the lobby with his cell phone, and he can help you navigate and show you how to give online. Um, if you would like to do that and, and you need help with that, he's going to be there helping those that need it. Um, Maybe you haven't made your decision yet today. It's totally understandable. But take that home and pray about it and then bring it back next week and place it in the offering bucket as the offering uh, goes around next week. And uh, we'll collect those partners then. Um, so I want you to pray for this. I want you to uh, truly think upon it. Um, this is something that we can do. I really believe that it's time. It's, I really believe with all my heart it's time. If not now, when? Uh, we can keep putting it off, but it's going to be three million dollars here in about five years, probably. Uh, and we can we can keep putting it off, and we can say, well, whenever it's convenient. It's never going to be convenient. It's never going to be convenient when you you you've got to move in faith. You've got to move in. Hey, I want to tell you something. You, you know when the, when God promised the Israelites when he when he gave them the promised land, did they just walk in and say, "Woo, we're here. Y'all got to leave. See you later." No, they had to fight. Amen. They had, to, they had to crawl. They, they had to fight tooth and nail to get the land that God, God had promised them the land. But that didn't mean that they could just walk in and say, here we are, y'all, see you later. God promised us this. No. So what does that mean for us? We've got to fight. We've got to, we've got to crawl and tooth and nail till we get up there. Amen. Anything worth doing is going to be hard. So I want you to remember that. I know I'm asking a lot of you, but I know what God has said. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Would you stand with me? Thank you for your time this morning. I do thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your time. Uh,